Ihr seht mich hier vor einer großen Blume. Here you can see me standing in front of an image of a meadow with flowers that was shot in an aspect ratio 4 to 3. As we are working in a 16 to 9 project, the question is how we can adapt the 4 to 3 image to our 16 to 9 project. So let me show you how to get rid of the black letterbox fields and at the same time show you how to handle keyframes in Nero Vision. Let's begin with the start screen of Nero Vision. On the left hand side you can see the options for selecting different jobs. In our case we want to use Make Movie or Slideshow and that is how we start. On the upper right hand side you can see the My Media Archive for video, image and audio clips. This is where we want to import our clips. We skip the option Import from Media Hub, that is a different story, and start importing files straight from the hard drive. We select two sample images. First we drag the 16 to 9 image into the timeline and the 4 to 3 image afterwards. Ich habe mich etwas wärmer anziehen müssen. As you can see, I had to put on some warm clothes as I'm standing in front of the frozen Midland sewer. The 16 to 9 image already looks good in the preview window, but the 4 to 3 image doesn't match the format. How can we manage to get rid of the black boards left and right while the image is correctly aligned to top and bottom? What do we do in order to achieve the correct scaling? We will enlarge the image horizontally and vertically until it fills the whole screen. We achieve this by using scale in the clip property window. The horizontal and vertical scale properties show 33.33%. .33%. We need to enlarge a 4 to 3 image by one third in order to fill the whole width. I insert 44.44 directly into the upper properties field. Both values are linked with the log symbol, so the lower value is synced to the initial set value automatically. The result already looks quite good. In the timeline I go back and forth and we can see that both images have the same format. Both are based on a 16 to 9 aspect ratio now. But in the 4 to 3 image, the upper and lower parts are hidden. How can we manage to show the whole image information even in the 4 to 3 image? We just use a simple solution. We will let the image scroll from bottom to top. We want to see each part of the image, so we select the clip property, position. Of course, we could drag the image via mouse on the preview screen in any position, left and right or up and down. But this way it's easy to have it out of control. Under position, we can find two buttons to bring the image back into a centralized position. Set position, vertical and horizontal will align the image in the center of the screen. Since we want the image to move over the screen in a controlled way, we are going to activate the keyframes. This point shows the first keyframe. Via the Y coordinate, we are dragging the image to the top so that we are able to see the formerly hidden lower part. You cannot see the mouse cursor when doing this. Let me just show you it again. Now I have reached the lower rim of the image. I release the mouse and you can see the cursor again. Now we are jumping to the end keyframe and are doing the same again. Here you can still see the mouse cursor, but now I press the left mouse button and the cursor is hidden. Now I have reached the upper part and the rim of the image. Subsequently, I release the mouse and the cursor is visible again. During dragging, the mouse cursor is not visible, but you can imagine that it just continues to move the way you drag the mouse. Now we want to check the result of our animation. I jump to the clip beginning and start playback. We can see that we have gained a continuous linear movement from bottom to top. Now I have just taken off my jacket, as probably everybody have realized that in fact I am not standing in front of this frozen channel. The linear movement of our 4 to 3 image that we have gained via the animation looks quite good, but the human perception can cope with no linear movements more easily. That means the image should start slowly, pick up normal speed afterwards and should get slower in the end again. 
We will manage this via the command bz interpolation that can be set in NeuroVision. I just click on play to see how it works. Slow, faster and slower at the end again. Next question. Are we able to achieve this Bezier movement even manually? Answer. Yes, we can. We just need two more keyframes. In order to set the nonlinear motion manually, we select linear interpolation initially. This way, we have a regular continuous movement again. Now we want to slow down the beginning. We go back to the beginning of the clip, then 4 frames right. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we set a new keyframe. This keyframe, initially close to the clip beginning, will be dragged to the middle of the clip. We do the same for the end of the clip. We move 4 frames backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4 and set a new keyframe. Again this keyframe, initially close to the end of the clip, will be dragged to the middle of the clip. Now we jump back to the beginning of the clip. What will happen if we play this clip back? Here in the entry part as well as in the end part you will see almost no movement. But in the middle part the clip will move almost completely from bottom to top. Let's see how that looks like in playback. Little movement, more movement, little movement. Again, almost no animation, more animation, little animation again. That's it. What did we learn in this tutorial? We have learned that via the clip property scale, you can adapt a 4 to 3 image to match a 16 to 9 project. Moreover, we have seen that via the clip property position and via keyframes you can move hidden parts of an image into the visible part. Bereich verschieben können. Außerdem haben wir gesehen, dass es im Winter vor einem zugefrorenen Mittellandkanal Further, sehr kalt ist. Further, we have seen that it's really cold in front of a frozen Mittelland sewer.